types of taxable supply. The first of the supplies that attract VAT is what we call the standard rated supplies. So they attract a VAT rate of 20%. So if a trader purchases standard rated supplies from a VAT registered trader, it means that they are going to be charged a VAT of 20%. Now that VAT of 20% that is charged on the purchases, the trader can claim that as an input. Now, if they also charge 20% on standard rated sales, that is they sell to their customers, they have to increase it by 20%. The charge is called the output. So that is what is supposed to be paid to the HMRC. So if you look at this illustration, an accountancy firm sold their services for $240 and purchased stationery for 12. Sorry, an accountancy firm, let's look at this illustration. An accountancy firm sold their services for 240 pounds and purchased stationery for 12 pounds. We are told that both of these transactions are standard rates and they are inclusive of VAT. So now we are supposed to estimate the net VAT payable. So first we have to estimate so the output VAT will be on the sales. The value of the sales is 240 and because it is inclusive of VAT we will divide it by 6 or we multiply it by 1 over 6. That is supposed to give us 40 pounds. Okay, then the input that is the VAT that they suffered on their purchases. We are told the VAT inclusive is 12 because it is inclusive of VAT. We will divide it by 6 and it will give us 2 pounds. So we have to deduct the input from the output. So the net VAT that is supposed to be paid to HMRC. Is 38 pounds. So if it was the other way around, the output was 2 and the input was 40, then they would have been eligible for a refund of 38 pounds from HMRC. So let's look at the types of transactions or the types of items when sold qualifies as standard rated supplies or bots. So the first is stationary. You have furniture, you have computers, you have cars, petrol and diesel products, accountancy fees, legal fees, advertising costs, confectionery, what we call toffees and stuff like that, sweetness, vans and lorries, repainting office premises, extension of business premises, and sale of freehold commercial buildings within three years from of completion. The next type of supply is the zero rated. Now these are items when sold attract VAT, but the rates applicable is zero percent. It is different from exempt supplies where VAT needs to be registered nor charged. Okay, but this VAT has to be charged. So when somebody is making a zero rated supply they have to charge the VAT by the rate that will apply a zero if a trader makes zero rated purchases it means that their supplier is also dealing in zero rated supplies so they charge the VAT as zero so there wouldn't be any input to be claimed okay if the trader themselves make zero rated sales they there is no VAT that is supposed to be paid or there is no VAT that is going to be payable because the rate charged on the sales is zero. Now, if the trader makes zero rated supplies and also had zero and also had standard rated purchases, it means that their output VAT will be zero. Okay, because it's going to be multiplied by zero percent and then their input VAT will be 
the 20% of whatever taxable value they made the purchases for. So let's say the input when calculated was 10 pounds, meaning there's going to be a repayment from HMRC of the 10 pounds. Okay. Now, in this example, the VAT registered trader sells baby clothes for 240 pounds, which is zero rated and pays for an advertisement which is standard rated of 120 pounds so these are inclusive of VAT so the output VAT because it is zero is going to be zero pounds which is the 240 times zero over 100 then the input is going to be 20 pounds which is 120 divided by 6 okay so there will be a repayment from HMRC of 20 pounds so let's look at the types of items when traded in qualifies for zero rated so we have basic food which does not include pet food or luxury items like alcohol high-end foods and stuff like that we also have sewage services and water drugs and medicines clothing and footwear for children export of goods outside the uk residential and charitable buildings transportation by here the transportation does not include transport for pleasure and transportation which has a certain capacity of less than 12 okay so if they have a standard capacity of less than 12 then they become standard rated if they exceed 12 seating then it becomes zero rated okay the next which is a third type of supply is the exempt one so here what is not supposed to be charged on such transactions so a person that is making exempt supply will not charge VAT because they cannot even register for VAT in the first place in the first place it also means that any VAT that is charged on their purchases cannot be claimed as an input the types of exempt supplies are land insurance postal services education health services burial and cremation services subscriptions to professional bodies financial services such as bank charges credit card charges and the likes and then sale of freehold commercial buildings owned for more than or equal to three years okay let's come to transactions when you make purchases on and you are charged VAT you can claim as an input so whenever you make purchases and you suffer VAT charges you can recover them under the following circumstances when fuel which is used for private mileage you buy you bought it and it is being used for private mileage for the by the sole trader or the employee you can claim the input on that but here what you do is that there is an output VAT that will be charged on the fuel that you are claiming the input on so now the output VAT is normally based on the CO2 emission on of the car that you bought the fuel into. So what we call is a scale charge. That is what determines the 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 VAT. That is what will determine the amount that you use to calculate the output VAT. And normally this will be provided in the examination. Okay, we'll solve an, an illustration soon, so it will be clearer. Now, when there are repairs done on motor vehicles, provided the motor vehicle is used for business purposes, the repair will qualify for an input to be claimed when a VAT is charged. Now, business entertainment, if it relates to overseas customers, any VAT charged on it will be claimed as input. Okay. So let's look at an illustration. So in the quarter to 31st March, 2024 Mimi Mimi's input VAT 
on a fuel cost, which is 20% used for private purposes. The fuel cost was 1,200, which is inclusive of VAT. The relevant scale charge for the car is 458 pounds. So how much VAT will she pay or reclaim for the quarter ended 31st March 2023? So for the output VAT, we are going to use a scale, the relevant scale charge. The relevant scale charge is 458. So this is like the taxable supply, the taxable sale, the, the, the standard rated sale with respect to the fuel that Mimi is claiming because there is a private usage of it. So to calculate the output, it's going to be 458 pounds divided by six. Then the input will be the 1,200 divided by six. So this is giving us 200 pounds for the input. Please give me this figure. So let's say 76 pounds. So it means that the repayment from HMRC is going to be 124 pounds. Now we've looked at inputs that can be recovered. Let's look at those that will not qualify for to be will not qualify to be claimed from the standard rated sales. So the first is when entertainment of UK customers. When an expenditure on the first is when UK customers are entertained. The business entertain UK customers. Whatever VAT that is attracted or is incurred cannot be recovered. Also, when a business owner uses an item privately and there is a charge, there's a VAT charge on it, that item does not qualify for the input to be claimed. So the item must be used for business purposes. Also, motor cars, if the motor car is not used solely for business purposes, okay, whether the motor car is being used by the employee or the owner, once it is not bought to be 100% used for business activities, any input charge or any VAT charge on the purchase of that motor car cannot be recovered. Okay. So let's look at this illustration. Lena Limited is registered for VAT. All figures are inclusive of VAT. The following information relates to the company's VAT return for the quarter ended 31st March 2024. We have standard rated sales of £60,000, standard rated purchases and expenses of £30,000. On 1st January 2024, Lena Limited purchased a motor car for an employee costing £12,000, which is inclusive of VAT. The car is used for both business and private purposes. Lena Limited paid for the petrol and repairs of the car. The relevant quarterly scale charge is £310 for the quarter to 31st March 2024. The scale charge is based on the CO2 emission of the car. The petrol and running cost of the car was £2,000 VAT inclusive. So we are supposed to calculate the VAT payable for the quarter ended 31st March 2024. So we start with the sales. So they had sales and they, we said the sales is 30,000 pounds. We are told that all these figures are inclusive of VAT. So in order to calculate the VAT, it's going to be 60,000 pounds divided by 6, which will give us 10,000 pounds. The next is the input on the purchases. So the purchases, that will be an input. We are told it's 30,000 pounds inclusive of VAT. That is going to give us 5,000 pounds. We less it. Then, Lena purchased a motor car for an employee costing 12,000 pounds. Now, because the motor car is going to be used privately and commercial, uh, privately and commercially, it will cease to enjoy or it will cease for the input to be recovered. So, the input on the VAT 
on the input VAT on the purchase of the motor vehicle cannot be claimed. For the petrol, okay, the scale charge is 310, which is inclusive of the VAT. So it's going to be 310 divided by 6. What would that give us, please? So 52, that was an output VAT. The petrol and the running cost of the car was 2000. So now, this petrol is the output. So we have petrol and running cost 2000 inclusive of VAT. So it's going to be 2000 pounds divided by 6, which will give us 333 pounds. So it's an input. So we deduct it. The total. So 4,719. So it means that because it is not a negative, it is output VAT payable. Let's come to impairment losses. So where the, imp the VAT on bad debt, how we can recover it. So normally when you make a sale, the input, when you make a sale and you charge the VAT on it, we discuss the tax point. So the tax point is either the date that the payment has been made on the sale or the date that the goods or services were rendered to the customer or the date if it was invoiced 14 days within the date the delivery or the delivery date of the goods or the services. So when you sell an item, it means that the latest date that you have to record or charge the VAT is 14 days from the date that you deliver the goods to the customer. So by the time you sell the item to the customer, and let's say the customer is supposed to pay, let's say 30 days later, by the 14 day after delivery, the customer will be invoiced or will be charged VAT and then at the end of the quarter the company has to prepare to pay the VAT to HMRC now if the customer does not pay the debt or does not pay for the goods or services that has been rendered to them the trader is not only losing the sales that has been made to the customer the trader will also have lost the money that has been paid to HMRC because the trader will have to account for the VAT that he or she has sold. That is the meaning of the tax point. There are ways that the trader can recover the input or they can recover the VAT that was charged to the customer but has not paid, becomes a bad debt and has been paid to HMRC. There are conditions that must be satisfied before that VAT on the bad debt can be recovered. The first is that the loss must have been written off to the accounting records or the financial statements so if the person was supposed to have paid over 30 days and it is 90 days or 120 days or 60 days but you believe that the person is not in a position to settle the debt so you write the debt off that is the first condition the second condition is that it should be six months post the due date of payment so if the customer bought the item on 1st january 2024 and was supposed to have paid a month later that is on 1st february 2024 the date that will qualify you for a recovery of the vat should be six months post the 1st february 2024 which is going to be 1st august 2024 so if these conditions are met then the seller can include the VAT that they pay to HMRC as an input on their next return. So the VAT that was charged on this 10,000 can be claimed as an input in the next return that they are making to HMRC. So let's look at this illustration. Juju Limited made a sale on 31st August 2023. So the sale was on 31st August 2023. For 120,000, for 120 pounds, VAT inclusive. So here, 
if it is 120 pounds it means that the vat will be 20 pounds now the buyer was given a 30 day credit period so under normal circumstance the debt should be due on 30th september 2023 that is the due date okay Now, on 31st March 2024, 31st March 2024, the debt was not paid and written off in judges' accounting records. So, from 30th September 2023 to 31st March 2024, this is exactly six months. So, both conditions have been satisfied. They have written off the debt okay and six months has elapsed since the debt was due so this 20 pounds that has been claimed it will be included as an input even though they have not suffered any purchases that's what has been charged on for this 20 so the next set of returns that will be made to hmrc included together with any input value that they have recorded to hmrc Let's come to late filing penalty. So the penalty for filing works on a point-based system. And here when we talk about filing, it is when the business tabulates all the activity in relation to VAT and then presents it to HMRC. Informs HMRC that this is the taxable supplies or zero-rated supplies I made within the quarter. This is the output, this is the input. So this is the amount liable to be paid or the amount that I am eligible to receive credit for. That is the filing. And we're told that the deadline is one month after the quarter has ended plus seven days. Each time a VAT is submitted late, so one business point will be raised. So for the 31st March filing date, it is supposed to be filed on 7th May. Okay. If it is filed on 8th May, one point will be filed, will be raised. Okay. Now, for the quarter 30th June, the deadline is 7th August. If the filing is done on 8th August, 8th August, another point will be raised. For the quarter 30th September, the filing is supposed to be done on 7th November. If the filing is done on 8th November, another third point will be raised. So for the last quarter, which is 31st December, the deadline is 7th February the following year. If you file it on 8th February, four points will be raised. Now on each of these points, there wouldn't be any liability or there will only be any penalty raised. By the moment you get to the fourth point, then there will be a cash penalty of £200 to be paid. So once you get to the £200, any subsequent late filing okay, will individually attract a £200. So the next filing date, which is 31st March, which is supposed to be filed on 7th May, if you miss it and file on 8th May, then there will be a fifth filing, a filing pay and delayed payment, so a delayed filing. So this one, instead of a point being raised, you will still you will have an additional two hundred pounds being charged. So after the fourth point, where you are charged two hundred pounds, every late filing will attract two hundred pounds. Now, if you don't get to the fourth point, and you stay at three point or two point. And you file on time for the next two years the points will be wiped, wiped away so you start from point point zero however if you get to the fourth point you cannot if you even if you file consistently the two years has elapsed if you don't flout any filing dates it will not go away like the ones that they didn't get to the fourth point now for your slate to be wiped clean when you get to the fourth point then you have to file four consecutive returns on time 
then you will be reverted to the the default position okay so to reset to zero a business must submit four VAT returns on time over a 12 month period so for the next four quarters not you file on time this first one you file late the second one that will be wiped off the next four consecutive filing must be done on time now when we come to the late penalty the same deadline applies so if the first quarter which is let's say 31st august 31st, uh, 31st march 2023 the deadline is supposed to be 7th may 2023 if the payment is done let's say on 10th may 2023 it is only three days after the deadline so because it is not more than 15 days there wouldn't be any penalty charged however if the filing date okay instead of it being paid if the payment of the liability instead of it being made on 7th may it was made on 27th may now this 27th may this 10th may is just three days so no penalty if it was made on 27th may which is 20 days any payment that is made late for a period of 16 to 30 days will attract two percent so if the payment that should have been made on 7th may is ten thousand pounds and it is paid 20 days late there will be an additional two percent raised which will be 200 pounds two percent of the ten thousand pounds so the total will now be ten thousand two hundred to be paid to hmrc okay now the deadline is 7th may 2023 but then the payment was made more than 30 days so 30 days of 7th july let's say they filed on 8th june which is more than 30 days now when that, when that happens four percent of the liability will be charged so in this instance if ten thousand was the liability to be paid and it was paid more than 30 days late then four percent will be applied which will be 400 so the total liability that will be paid will be ten thousand four hundred now where the liability is paid more than 30 days late okay in addition to the four percent an additional <clears throat> a daily penalty at an annual rate of four percent will be charged beginning after the 30 day period okay so when you get to you pay after 30 days the four percent will be registered then any other day after the 30 after after the 30th day an annual rate of four percent will be charged until you make the payment let's look at the interest so for example you were supposed to pay on 7th july but you paid 10 days late or you paid 20 days late the penalty that we talked about is for your failure to pay on time now because the money is with you hmrc is losing because that money if it had been invested or used for any activity benefits would have been derived so because the money is with you the interest should accrue on the money that you are keeping in addition to the penalty so any late penalty attracts a six a six point five annual interest okay from the due date to the date that the liability is paid let's look at an illustration so tommy has submitted his vat returns as follows on the quarter ended 30th june 2023 the vat that was paid was 22,000 pounds but he paid seven days late so when we come to the first one the 30th june 2023 we are told that he paid late so let's assume that he also filed late okay so once 
that's the first time that he's filing late. We we're not told of any incidents earlier. So for filing, that will be point one. Penalty point one generated. Okay. So let's say for filing. Penalty point one. Then we come to the payment. The payment is seven days late. So there wouldn't be there wouldn't be any penalty because it is within the 15 days. When we come to the interest, the interest will now be 22,000 pounds times the 6.5 percent times 7 over 365 because the 6.5 percent is annual. So the seven days that he has kept the money from the time that it was due, interest has to be charged. So what are we getting for this please? 274 okay so that's what he will pay here when we come to the second point on 30th September 2023 the second one he missed the payment he missed the filing 45 days so for filing that's it's the second that's the second default so it will be penalty point two then we come to payment he has paid 45 days late so for the 30 days it will be 45 it will be four percent so four percent on the 29 500 so it's going to be 29 500 times 4 percent what would that give us please 1180 then we are told that an additional 4 percent will be charged on each day that the filing is late so after the 30 days we have 15 days so for the rest of the 15 days okay it's going to be 4% on the amount. That's also going to be 29,500 times 4%. But this one is annualized. So it's going to be 15 divided by 365. What would that give us, please? 48 pounds. Then we come to the... We come to the... The interest... The money was with him for 45 days. So it's going to be the 29,500 times 6.5% times 45 divided by 365. What is that going to give us, please? 236 pounds. Okay. Then we come to the third filing date. It's 31st December 2023 it was filed 21 days late so for the filing third penalty point no cash penalty when we come to the payment the payment was late 21 days and this is between 16 and 30 so only a 2% charge will apply so here we are going to get 24,000 times 2% giving us that 480. Okay. Then we come to the interest. It is going to be the 24,000 times the 21 days times 21 over 365 times 6.5% giving us 90 pounds then when we come to the last one the date of 31st March 2024 for the filing 
because it is the fourth default or the fourth time they've missed the filing there will be a 200 pounds cash penalty that is the fourth point then for the payment I was late by two days so there will be no payment penalty for the interest the 31,000 pounds times the two divided by 365 times 6.5 percent giving us 11. let's look at the scenario where the returns are filed on time but there has an errors embedded in them so if a VAT return is submitted incorrectly there are penalties and interest that apply now if the error is disclosed or was detected and disclosed by the taxpayer the taxpayer themselves found out the error and made HMRC aware the penalty will depend on whether those errors are small or large now if the error occurs such an error occurs normally there are default interest and standard penalties that are, are that apply so whether a standard penalty or a default interest will apply will be dependent on whether the error is small or large now a default interest is based on the default in the default interest is normally the interest that is based on the delayed payment of the liability and then the standard penalty is normally payable based on the reason for the late submission or the late error okay so the standard penalty the standard penalty may be payable depending on the reason for the error okay now we spoke about the error being defined as either small or large let's look at how we are judge it so for an error to be small it must be smaller than what we call the d minimus limit okay now the d minimus limit is the greater of ten thousand pounds on one hand and then one percent of the ten over of the business on the other hand now the one percent will be restricted to a maximum of will be restricted to fifty thousand pounds so if the turnover of the business is one million pounds okay and then one percent <clears throat> if the business uh, a business turnover is 500 million pounds and then one percent comes to five million pounds you will only restrict it to fifty thousand pounds and then compare it to the ten thousand pounds where in this scenario the fifty thousand pounds will be the one to be picked and and determine whether the error is small or large okay so if you look at the consequences if the error is small there wouldn't be any default interest payable okay but if it is large where it is above the de minimis limit then a default interest will apply now if an error is made and disclosed by the VAT the VAT the VAT payer the VAT trader if the error is small they can disclose it on the next VAT return the subsequent VAT return to HMRC they can disclose the error or the correction on it now if the error is large they have to make a separate disclosure from the subsequent return that they are making to HMRC okay now the standard penalty for small error will be dependent on the reason why the error emanated however if the error is large then the standard penalty will apply okay so we've seen the fourth interest of the 6.5 percent per annum and the penalty will depend on how long it took okay so if you look at this illustration baby limited has made an error relating to understated output vat of seven thousand pounds for the quarter to 31st december 2023 
the company's turnover for the quarter is £200,000. So how should this error be disclosed to HMRC? So first, we have to determine whether the error is small or large. So let's determine the de minimis limit. The de minimis limit, we are told, is the larger of £10,000 and 1% of their turnover, which is £200,000, which will give us £2,000. So now, the de minimis limit we will choose is 10000 because it is greater than the 2000 So the error will be deemed to be small because it is less than the de minimis limit of the £10,000. Okay. So... Once it is small, the subsequent returns to HMRC, they can include the 7,000 to it. Now, in the situation where it is HMRC that fishes out the errors and discloses it, there will be a default interest applying regardless of the size of the error. Also, there will be a standard penalty. So it is onerous and important for taxpayers to peruse their records even after they have been filed to make sure that any errors that are present are identified and corrected. Okay. Now, the standard penalty will be based on the reason for the inaccuracy. So if the mistake was genuine, then there wouldn't be any penalty applying. If it was a careless mistake, something that they should have known they ought to have they ought not to have made a mistake but they were not diligent then it would have been 30 percent the 30 percent of the vat due will be raised as the standard penalty now if it is found that the error is deliberate then 70 percent of the vat that was erroneously recorded will be charged as a standard penalty if the error was deliberately made and was concealed and the HMRC found it out, then the 100% of the VAT that was recorded erroneously will be charged as a penalty. Let's come to import and export trade, the VAT those that applies to it. We'll start with when goods are being exported out of UK. So, when goods are exported out of UK, they are treated as zero-rated supply, meaning there will be VAT charged on those items, but the rate applicable is zero. Now, the supply of services outside of UK is outside the scope of VAT, so it means that it is exempt. So, you don't have to even charge anything at all on the supplies of services. So when a UK VAT register, a VAT registered supplier or a trader supplies computers costing £10,000 to a company outside UK, let's say USA, this will be treated as a zero rated supply. So the output VAT that is applicable will be zero pounds, which is a £10,000 at zero percent. So there wouldn't be any output VAT that will be paid. On the other hand, if the goods are being brought into UK, you must account for VAT on acquisition of the goods outside of the UK. So the UK trader will account for the goods they have imported and they will be accounted for as standard rated. They will be accounted for as standard rated as it will be used as standard rated in the UK. Okay. So once they apply the standard rates on the goods that have been imported, because they are going to be sold as standard rated goods, then he will turn around and claim the VAT, the output VAT that he has claimed on the imports of the goods as an input. Okay. So the net effect is zero. The goods that they bought, he will charge VAT on it. 
and then he will claim the VAT that he has charged on it as what an input. So the net effect is zero. No VAT payable, no VAT claimable. Okay. So there will be the situation where the VAT that has been charged as an output cannot be claimed. It's when the business is making exempt supplies. So when a business is making exempt supplies, they don't qualify for inputs. So the goods that they will import, they can only apply the standard rate of 20% on it. But because they are not VAT registered, they cannot claim that VAT as an input. So therefore, the VAT output that they register will not have to be paid to HMRC. Okay. So in this illustration, a UK company purchased computers costing £10,000 VAT exclusive from a company in the USA. So in this situation, because it is being imported and the company, we've not been told that they are exempt suppliers. So for output, we will deem this 10000 bots as as if it was bought from a VAT registered trader. Okay. So the 10,000, which is VAT exclusive, we are going to apply the 20% on it, which is going to give us 2,000 pounds as output. That is the 10,000 pounds cost of the computer times the 20% standard rate. Okay. Now, on the same return, this UK company will claim this same 2,000 pounds as an input once he or she is dealing in either standard rated or zero rated supplies so it will still be the ten thousand pounds at 20 percent so the vat payable or claimable is nil let's look at this illustration bw limited a UK VAT registered UK business that makes only taxable supplies. Okay. It acquired 12,000 of goods from its suppliers in the United States of America and 120,000 pounds of goods from its suppliers in Germany in the quarter to 31st March 2024. So, in the same VAT quarter, BW Limited made sales of 50,000 pounds to a VAT registered customer in France and 10,000 pounds of goods to a business in Australia. We are supposed to discuss the implications of the above transactions. So we are told all transactions are exclusive of VAT. So if you come to the purchases that they made, so because they bought goods in US, they said it is 12,000. So normally what we do is that the output VAT that will be calculated. We will put the ones they bought. Okay, so let's do with the one they bought from USA. So we are told that it is exclusive of VAT. So it will be 12,000 pounds times 20%, which will give us 2,400. Then the one from France. Oh, sorry, the one from Germany is twenty thousand pounds. So it's twenty thousand pounds times twenty percent, which will give us four thousand. Okay. Now, so the total output is now six thousand four hundred. So we now turn around and claim it as input. 6,400 pounds. We are told that in the same VAT period, they made sales of 50,000 to a VAT registered customer in France of 10,000 pounds. So here, we are told that when they export goods, the output will be treated as a zero rated supply. For the one going to the one going to France, it will be zero pounds, which is the 50,000 times zero percent. 
and the one going to Australia will also be zero pounds, which is the ten thousand pounds times zero percent. So the net effect is that there wouldn't be any tax claimed or paid for these transactions. Let's come to VAT special scheme. So these are schemes that are available to small businesses so that they will normally reduce the amount of work that they will put into the VAT and then the amount that they will pay as VAT. Okay. So normally there are three schemes. We have the cash accounting scheme. We have the annual accounting scheme. And then we have the flat rate scheme. Let's look at them one after the other. For the cash accounting scheme, the tax point is when the customer pays for the goods that they have bought. And then when the business pays for purchases that they have made. So you know normally when we are dealing with VAT, we mentioned that the tax point when we deal with sales is either the point where the goods or the services is rendered to the customer or when payments are made for the goods or the services rendered, whichever one precedes, when the payment precedes the delivery, that will be the time that we have to account for VAT. And then in that quarter, payments and accounting has to be made. Or when invoice is raised 14 days within 14 days of the delivery of the goods or the rendering of the services. But for the cash accounting scheme, until you get payment for the goods you sold or the services you rendered, you cannot account for the output VAT. For the purchases, until you the business pays for the goods you bought or the services you, in, you, you, you contracted, you cannot claim the input. So there are conditions that are necessary for the cash accounting scheme to be subscribed to. The first is that the businesses turnover annually must not exceed one million three hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Then they must make sure they keep their VAT returns up to date. And then the business should be prepared to leave the scheme if their annual taxable supply exceeds one million. Six hundred thousand pounds. The advantages of subscribing to a cash accounting scheme is that the business will not have to bother about paying the VAT until it gets the money from their customers. So normally, when you are dealing with businesses, and for example, you are dealing on credit, the problem is that when you are dealing on quarterly basis, okay. So you sell items in January, sell in February, sell in March. So if you are accounting for this quarter and you're supposed to pay on the 7th of May, if you give the person credit of let's say 60 days, if the person buys in March, 60 days will go beyond 7th May. Okay, so 60 days, if the person pays or buys let's say close of March, close to the end of March, then the person will be paying June, July, March, April, so April, May, so ending of May. So it means that you, the business, have to finance or fund the payment of the VAT on behalf of the customer, hoping that the customer will pay, and then you reverse the money. So in this scheme, you only take the money from the customer and then direct it to HMRC. Now, the scheme, because of this situation, you don't have to bother about the bad debt relief because if the person doesn't pay, you don't pay HMRC. If you don't pay your suppliers, you don't claim the input. Your suppliers also would not have to pay HMRC. So automatic bad debt relief. So let's look at this illustration. Iran has an annual turnover of £1,200,000. Now all sales are standard rated and are made on credit for 60 days. All purchases are standard rated and are also made on credit for 30 days. So if ERA opts into the cash accounting scheme, when will she need to account for 
the VAT for her sales and purchases. If ERA opts into the VAT accounting scheme, the output VAT will be accounted for 60 days after sales. So if the sales was made on 1st January 2024, then 60 days you are getting to 29th February 2024. That is when they are supposed to account for it. Now when you come to the input, that is 30 days later. Okay, that is the purchases. So if the purchases was made on 1st January 2024, 30 days, you are looking at 30th January 2024. Let's come to the second special scheme, which is the annual accounting scheme. In this scenario, at one VAT return is prepared annually. You don't have to pay returns quarterly by default, or if you choose to file your returns monthly, you don't have to pay returns for every month. The VAT return is due two months after the annual accounting VAT period, along with the balancing payment of VAT. So the balancing payment, it results from the fact that in the annual accounting scheme, you will make nine equal installments, nine equal installments from the fourth month in the, the accounting period to the 12th month. Okay. Now, the installment is 10% of the previous, la previous year's VAT that was paid. So if you make the nine equal installments, at the end of the year, your actual VAT liability, then you deduct the payment that has already been made. That would be the balancing payment that we are talking about. And that would have to be paid two months after the end of the annual accounting VAT period, in addition with the VAT returns. So conditions for a business to subscribe to annual accounting scheme will be the turnover must not exceed 1 million 350,000 pounds. They must also keep their VAT returns to date and the business must ex exit the scheme once their supplies exceed 1.6 million pounds. So the amount of entry is 1 million 350,000 pounds and the exit amount is 1.6 million pounds. The advantages of being operating in the annual accounting scheme is that you save administration costs instead of preparing to file your returns every month or every quarter you do it once in a year and you are safe also with the quarterly payments you accumulate your returns or your input and output for three months and then you pay for another three months and then you pay that's that brings a toll on the business okay and also if you have your income or if you have the input you claim it but here you are making small regular payments so you pay nine months first 10 percent of previous month's vast liability from the fourth so you are making small payments every month from the fourth month which is better than waiting to accumulate the bill and then look for huge money to go and pay because when the money is sitting down you will definitely find use for it to do okay now it also simplifies the accounting for VAT you only bring in your annual amount and then you take the input out and then you pay so for an illustration Edlin paid for Edlin for the year ended 31st December 2022 paid VAT of £10,000. She was eligible to enter the annual accounting scheme for the year ended 31st December 2023 and she had VAT payable of £12,000. So what were her payments during the year ended 31st December 2023? When did she make these payments? What was her balancing payment? 
and when did she make this payment so if her year is ending 31st december 2022 and we are considering 2023 then it's supposed to start on 1st january 2023 and end on 31st december 2023 okay now her previous year's tax liability was ten thousand pounds meaning from the fourth month which is april okay april 2023 she has to make installment of 1000 pounds which is the 10 percent of the liability of the previous year which is the 10,000 pounds the same for may so they will do it for may for june july september july august september october november december one two three four five six seven eight nine so she'll pay the thousand for all these periods which will amount to nine thousand pounds and we are told that her vat payable was twelve thousand pounds for the year ended 31st december 2023 so the first question is that what were her payment during the year so this is what we have answered and we have also answered the periods in which those payments were supposed to have been made now her balancing payments will be the annual vat liability of the twelve thousand pounds less than nine thousand pounds already paid giving us three thousand pounds now this three thousand pounds together with the vat returns must be made two months after the end of the period which is supposed to be 28th february so in this month this this year is a leap year so let's say 29th february 2024 let's come to the third and last scheme which is the flat rate scheme here instead of the rate of vat being charged at 20 percent if it is a standard rated supply or zero percent which if it's a zero with a supply there is a fixed rate that is provided to the trader now this rate differs from industry to industry so in the examination when they provide a question when they give a question that a flat rate applies they're going to give the relevant rate to apply or to use so this will be multiplied by the revenue of the trader and the VAT is determined now when you're using a flat rate scheme what it means is that whether you are selling a standard rated a zero rated or an exempt supply you would have to charge the flat rate so initially if you are dealing with standard rated you only charge 20 percent and you get an input if you are dealing in zero rated you charge zero percent if you're dealing in exempt you don't charge you don't even have to register but once you subscribe to the flat rate scheme anything you are selling irrespective of the category or the type of supply it is is chargeable to flat rates now you also have to note that from the set of april 2017 there is a standard rate of 16.5 percent for what we call limited cost traders it means that when in the examination a trader is christian a limited cost trader you have to apply 16.5 percent to their taxable sales irrespective of the industry that they are in so you'll be told in the examination where you are supposed to apply this 16.5 percent okay so the conditions for an individual to be able to the conditions for a business to be able to subscribe to the flat rate scheme is that their annual taxable turnover must not the annual taxable sales must not exceed 150,000 pounds the business should be prepared to exit the scheme once their turnover goes beyond 230,000 pounds and also once you subscribe to flat rate scheme any vat you suffer cannot be recovered so you only be charging output vat without input being recovered the advantage is that 
the scheme is simplified. Everything that you are selling goes at a fixed rate and there's no input. So you keep collecting the money and passing it on to HMRC. Your administrative cost is also reduced because you don't have to worry about input and output. So you just pay what you have charged. And there are also less detailed records to keep. You don't have to keep separate records of input and that of output and then prove to HMRC once they come to inspect the work that you have done so far. Okay. So let's look at this illustration. So AK Limited has annual sales of £84,000. The company also has expenses of 4800 These transactions are standard rated and inclusive of VAT. The flat rate is 16.5%. So we are supposed to advise AK Limited whether it is beneficial for her to use the flat rate scheme or use the normal or the standard rated approach. So let's work both scenarios and then adjudge. So from the standard rated, okay. So when we come to the sales, the output will be 84,000 divided by six, which will give us 14,000 pounds. Then the purchases, which will give us the input, will be the 4,800 divided by 6, which will give us 800 pounds. When you go through the standard approach, the output VAT you are paying is going to be 13,200. But when you come to the flat rate, the sales, annual sales is 84,000. The company also has expenses of 4,800. Now these transactions are standard rated and inclusive of VAT. So now if the sales that we are talking about here, if the 84,000 is inclusive of VAT, it means that the exclusive amount will be 70,000. Okay. So the exclusive amount is going to be 70,000, which is the 84,000 VAT inclusive amount, less the 14,000 VAT during the standard approach. So now for the flat rate, the output VAT is going to be 70,000 times 16.5. What would I give us, please? 11,550. So comparing paying VAT of 11,550 and also paying VAT at 13,200, then she's better off subscribing to the flat rate. Because if you look at this situation here, her actual sales, the exclusive amount will be 7,000, 70,000, right? And her purchases will be 4,000. So her profit normally is 66,000. Okay. Her profit is 66,000. So when you come to this scenario, the VAT that he is going to charge, the 70,000 is what he or she is going to get. Then you less your 4,800 from it. 4,800. So you're going to get 65,200. Okay. So if you are talking about profit wise, then he should stick with the standard rated. If you are talking about the amount of VAT to pay, then the flat rate is the way to go. Let's look at another illustration. Caleb Limited has annual sales of 120,000 pounds, all of which are standard rated supplies. The company's annual standard rated expenses are 6,000. Now these figures are inclusive of VAT. The relevant flat rate percentage for Snowdrop Limited trade is 15%. You are supposed to advise Caleb Limited whether or not 
to apply for the flat rate scheme. So again, for the standard rated operation, the output okay is going to be output is going to be ten thousand pounds which is the one twenty thousand divided by six sorry it's going to be twenty thousand twenty thousand pounds and we are told that he has some inputs the input is six thousand so it's going to give them one thousand pounds which is the six thousand divided by six so the payable is nineteen thousand pounds okay when you come to the standard rate so now when you come to the when you come to the when you come to the profit calculation if this is 20 then the sales for the business is hundred thousand that is the VAT exclusive and the purchases is five thousand so they are going to make ninety five thousand as profit okay when you come to the flat rate the output Will be the hundred thousand times the fifteen percent, which is going to be fifteen at the hundred thousand times fifteen. This is inclusive, so hundred thousand times fifteen percent, which will give you fifteen thousand pounds. So fifteen thousand pounds that's the hundred thousand, but exclusive amount times fifteen percent. Okay, now you cannot claim the input. Okay. So the VAT under the flat rate is lesser than the VAT under the standard rate. Let's see if calculation of profit will augur well for, for Caleb. So under this scheme, they have flat, they are VAT exclusive is 100,000. And then they'll claim the entire 6,000 will go as purchases. So now, they are going to go for a profit of 94,000. But the one advantage of the flat rate scheme is that under the standard rate, you are charging your customers 20%. And the flat rate, you are charging your customers 15%. So in as much as you are going to make more profit under the standard rate, you have to look at your competitiveness. Okay. So that is also another angle that you can argue out from. So for VAT purposes, the flat rate is the way to go. For profit purposes, you can decide. The last example, Winke Limited has annual sales of £96,000, of which 50% are standard rated, 50% are zero rated. All of the company sales are to VAT registered businesses. So the company's standard rated expenses are £30,000 per annum. These figures are inclusive of VAT. The relevant flat rate percentage for Winke Limited Trade is 6%. So now, for the standard rates, the sales, the output for Winke we are told that 50% is for standard. So we take the standard. 96,000. It will be 96,000 times 50%. And because it is VAT inclusive, okay, we we'll divide by 6. So half of 96,000 is 48,000. Divided by 6. Will give us eight thousand so the output is giving us eight thousand pounds the zero rated 50 percent is zero rated so for the zero rated the output is zero for the input we are told that the expenses are thirty thousand 
inclusive of VAT. So 30,000 divided by 6 is giving us 5,000. So the output payable is 3,000 pounds. Okay. Now when you come to the flat rate, it doesn't matter whether they are selling standard, zero, or exempt. The entire amount output of the 96,000 will go at the 6%. So that's going to be the 96,000. 96,000 is the inclusive amount. So we're told that the VAT component was 8,000. So we lay the 8,000 out and multiply by the 6%. What is that going to give us, please? 5,280. Okay, so under the standard rated, their VAT is lesser. Under the flat rate, their VAT is higher. So you can choose which one to go for.